I just want to do God's will. The kind of revolution that the world needs is a Christian revolution. If you want a miracle, you've got to expect it to happen. You are the recipients of God's grace and God's blessings, and you rejoice in that reality. Welcome to Life Today Live. It's Friday, and I've got something for your weekend that's going to make you smile. And if you if you can't get out this weekend to see it, or if it's not in your area, uh, you can always find out when and where you can see it because it's a wonderful movie called The Hill. And uh, I know someone, our, our the vice president of the ministry here, has seen the movie twice actually, and um, he says it's a love story on many levels, love of God, love of country, uh, love between a a young man and and a young woman, and a love of a sport, which for many people, you you get that, but, you know, just to be passionate about that thing that you feel like is your thing in life. Uh, You see all of these things, and yet adversity. I mean, it's called the hill, but uh, there were mountains that had to be overcome, Uh, and I think that's what makes it such a great film. well, you know what? I tell you what, I'll be quiet about it. I'm glad you're here. And if you're watching this later, uh, you can go find out where the movie's at. Um, you know, if it's not in theaters still. Uh, but if you're watching this this weekend, basically August 25th, 26th, whenever, you really should make plans and go see this while it's in theaters because it'll it'll be better <laughs> and also it'll help get it into other theaters so more and more people can see it. And these are the kind of movies we want to support. But I'll I'll be quiet because I want you to see the trailer. This is The Hill. Tie game, bottom of the ninth. At bat, Ricky Hill. Oh my gosh! What did you do? Let's go! Ricky, I've seen you out there swinging that stick, even when you're suffering pain. Ah! But you can't play baseball. You're gonna get ridiculed? And you're going to wind up with an injury that you'll never get over. God's going to give you a higher calling. But all I want to do is play. When I swing that bat, I ain't crippled no more. And gone, Senior Ricky Hill. He did four homers in one game. Son, you might be better, but you are not healed. Your bones are rapidly depleting. It'll be a miracle if you ever walk again. You seen this? Major League trials. You're going to paralyze him. I don't need you filling him full of false hope. He's my son. Ricky, baseball had to end eventually. Time to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. First time you ever talked to me like a man is to tell me to forget the only thing I ever loved. What has gotten into you? He's special. They said he will never walk and he ran. How many miracles do you need? You're playing to join the elite. I'm one of the best hitters you're ever going to see. A bad leg could cost the team wins and money. It's all stacked against me. If you don't try, you're going to die inside. I want my dreamer back. All your hopes. I cannot do this alone. Dreams. It's your time, Ricky! Determination and sacrifices have come down to this. That is The Hill. It is available in theaters right now. So uh, be sure you go to the website, thehillmov.com, The Hill Movie. And you can find out where you can see the movie now. Of course, if you're watching this later, you check the website and see where it's available to, to view or maybe by the time you see this to purchase. But if you haven't seen it by now, you want to put this at the top of your list. Now, I have a couple of gentlemen, key gentlemen with the film, the ones who got it made. And uh, that's Rick Hill himself, as well as the director, Jeff Salentano. Welcome both of you guys to Life Today Live. Good to have you both here. Thank you, Randy. We're really excited to be here. Um, Thanks, Randy. Absolutely. So um, I do understand uh, because, you know, uh, our uh, vice president of of the organization here is friends with Rick. 
I've been hearing about this movie for a long, long time. Did this take a little while to get made? A couple days. A couple <laughs> days. Oh, no. 17 years. 17 um, years. Yeah. And it's probably been more if you add up where we are at today. 17 years since I started filming the movie in 2021. Mm. Um, and then, of course, now, today, we're getting it released by Briarcliff. Uh, we're really lucky to have them a part of this movie and that, that they they took it on and believed in it. Um, it's been a long journey, that's for sure. And um, like Ricky's Ricky's baseball career, it took him a long time to get up enough uh, enough stamina and gumption and 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 um, passion to like go out on that field and tell Red Murph he was the hardest hitter he's ever going to see. <laughs> and um, and, and and gave him that one shot and that's what happened with me ricky gave me that shot to direct this movie and uh here we are today well so i i know that you know the filmmaking industry uh can, can be like that i mean it's, it's not unusual for projects to take a while but what were the hurdles that you guys had to get over to get this uh made and into distribution well the number one hurdle was um the number one thing rick you you're okay no, I'm great. Okay. Um, the, the, the number one, the number one hurdle I have not really talked about was the fact that these movies are hard to get made. That was number one, um, hard to get people to, they do all their demographics and they, they do all their algorithms and they see, Oh, sports in a movie, faith in a movie, family drama, family film, inspirational movie. Um, you know, uh, those, those are tough, tough sells. Well, when they're good, they're not. I mean, yeah. look at the best ones. Yeah. Field of Dreams, Seabiscuit, um, sure. The Natural, Blindside, um, all these films. Uh, remember the Titans. Mm -hmm. um, they forget about those. And they also, algorithms don't mean anything. They're missing the human heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I went for the human heart because my heart was completely taken over by this story. From the first moment I ever read it, I was hooked. I, I had to get this movie made because of what it did to me. Mm. Uh, it made me feel like a little kid again. It made me feel like I could do anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Rick, uh, what what was the process like for you? Uh, because this is not just a movie. This is this is your life on the screen. Yeah, I tell you, this was a this was really a, a rough road in the beginning, uh, which uh, we've talked about this so much. But it began in that, actually nineteen seventy eight. Um, you know, my, my dad being a Baptist minister, and then I was playing professional baseball at the time. And uh, my brother wrote a story in 1976 about what happened and everything. Uh, the toss up between me being a minister and also me playing professional baseball. And then how hard it was to get, you know, to get a contract, to get it, to get a sign of contract to, to play professional baseball. So my brother wrote this big story and a guy at our church turned around and he took it to Hollywood. And from there on, uh, I got offers of wanting to buy the story. A man, which a man that started it from my church. And then, uh, um, we had to go from there and I, my father became ill at the very same time. And, uh, my, so did my mother. At the same very time, and uh, um, and it was just a, a, th a process that I had to say no because I couldn't do this with my father and my mother both ill at the mm. same time. My dad with terminal cancer, mm. my mother with a brain tumor at the same very time. So we, ha I had to say no and just back out of it and not have anything to do with it. But he had called on me several times during over the years. And I just said no, because I was not even interested in baseball at the time anymore. I was very upset because uh, I had blamed God a lot about it. And and it things like that, it bothered me tremendously. And um, and then finally, uh, I came to the realization that uh, uh, the day that they buried my father um, was on Ronald Reagan's um, inauguration. Wow. And uh, I had uh, I had I had to come to realize that there's something 
some reason this has happened and then finally i get my answer years later yeah. and uh is all well, about we both, both just realized that that this story happened uh the movie happened so ricky could tell his story that's why he went through everything he went through yeah yes still held his faith up through all that and everything he's been through yeah well i mean it, it sounds like not only is the story about faith but the making of the film is a story of faith on, uh, for, you know on both of your parts mm -hmm. yeah and it's, you know what the real challenge was randy to make a movie where people that don't go to church or people that don't have faith or aren't christian or don't care about it interested in this movie yeah. and that was my i wanted to ride that line of mainstream for everyone like like these movies like when the game stands tall uh, remember the Titans, Field of Dreams. I wanted to make a movie everybody could love and not have to be made for one group. And so I think I did that. I've got the sports world covered there. I've got the faith element, which is really strong because it resonates with the faith audience. Like we just experienced at Joel Osteen's church. Um, people were, it was an out-of-body experience I had there. It was, it was mind-blowing what it did to people emotionally. And so, but the most important thing for this movie was the family element. Um, families can watch this movie ages two to five, uh, five to 20, 20 to 30. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are. Even even older people really relate to it, because especially because of the era and the nostalgia of it, sure. which I want to put into it. Sure. All right. I, I want to, I have some questions about the film itself, but I have to ask Ricky, you know, when we see, you portrayed in the film uh and we we know people that aren't familiar with you know they haven't kept up with you your entire life how how have you fared over the years physically well um i've had a multitude of surgeries hmm. um because when i collapsed as a professional uh i had surgery immediately where i could was able to walk at least walk hmm. and then it was still a battle um um do you, do you have chronic, I, chronic pain yeah. is chronic pain oh, a problem? oh yeah i've lived i've lived i slept most of the time on the floor with my legs up on the bed most of the time oh. and uh but but it's been a battle with my spine because when you're born with no disc in your spine it makes it pretty difficult to swing a bat golf club swing whatever it doesn't matter oh. to, to play any sport you have to you have to weather and, and bear the pain and I did, I did, and uh, I did it as a professional ball player. I I made it two more years, and they said that I that I would, and so that was an accomplishment that I was really proud of, and uh, uh, because they said I would be paralyzed, uh, one day I would be. My grandmother and my great grandmother were paralyzed with the same disease, mm. uh, at a very young age too, by the way. Um, but yeah, it was a pure battle each and every day it was a battle mm -hmm. that i never even told anybody about i just kept it to myself and uh when i had the surgeries i didn't even let anybody know about the surgeries um other than my family my mm -hmm. family knew all about it but saying that it was a fight every every day mm. wow wow oh geez okay um i want to come back to you in a second rick but uh, i'm I want to hit a couple of points about the film. Uh, one, Jeff, is the the cast. I mean, you you got a strong cast. How did you guys pull together, you know, Dennis Quaid and some of the other people in that? Because that's, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. Well, I knew I wanted to get a great cast from day one, and I had to get a great, great casting director. So I got Rick Montgomery interested, who did Green Book, and had just won the Academy Award. And I figured he was the perfect person. He was at the top of his game and he's a great guy and he understood the script. He actually made me go back after the script was done and fix all these little things in it that he felt were not correct and not not making it a perfect script. And nobody else saw it. Hmm. But little things like Ricky was called Ricky and then Rick. He wanted to be consistent the whole time because he said, um, you get one shot at a movie star. And the script's got to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So I set out and I had Dennis Quaid in my sights from day one. Mm -hmm. had the, he was a full circle person, um, a man. He, 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 he had the quality of strength, toughness, but also compassion and warmth. Mm -hmm. 
and he was funny and he had that great grin and smile that just warms people's hearts. And he had been in the rookie and he was just a, a guy that everybody still loves today as much as they did back in the day. Yeah. So I got, then I wanted uh, the wife to be Joelle Carter because I always was a fan of hers from Justified, the TV series. She played Ava Crowder. Oh, yeah. And Scott Glenn, yeah. Scott Glenn was perfect for Red Murphy, even looked like him. <laughs> we thought about Duvall at one time, but Duvall was a little, uh, he was he was not, you know, doing well at the time. Yeah. And, and then Randy Hauser, uh, Dennis re recommended him. He said, what about Randy to play Red? And I said, I love Randy Hauser's music. He's a huge country star, and I always wanted a country star in this movie somewhere to reach that <laughs> audience. And so Randy loved it and came aboard and, and then the kids, they were a whole nother uh, extravagant uh, casting situation by, you know, we searched all over the world for little Ricky. Yeah. Got him from, he came out of California just by sheer luck, but he had never done anything. He never acted a day in his life. Really? His father, yeah. His father was a film director and a TV director. And that's what sold me. I, I called Michael and I basically auditioned the father. I said, if you can keep, get this kid to be perfect with his dialogue and come to set ready, I'll hire him, but he's got to be good. <laughs> but his innocent quality is what made that part work so well because he's basically acting the truth of a little boy. Yeah. You know, and funny enough, um, uh, Bonnie Bedelia uh, was very interested in playing the grandmother. And I always thought of her as like a pretty younger lady. Yeah. And I never saw her in her original look. She came, you know, she came out of the makeup chair with her full makeup and hair. <laughs> And then one night I saw her in the hotel and she said, look, Jeff, I'm actually cute still. <laughs> and she was, she was looking just like she used to look, even almost back to the day of, of Die Hard, you know? Yeah. So she really pulled that part off. Oh, um, yeah. And then and then the, the, the girlfriend um, and then Colin Ford, of course, was amazing. Um, we Dennis and I auditioned him out of three guys I picked. And Dennis hands down said, I don't think we need to look anywhere else. And I said, yeah, I had seen Colin in um, We Bought a Zoo with Matt Damon. Oh, yeah. And he he really intrigued me. And uh, he had the qualities I was looking for. He's also um, a Christian kid with a pure heart. Mm. Um, so humble and sweet. You know, I don't have to knock him down a notch. He's always like right there. That's great. We've become really close. Yeah. And um, it was just an unbelievable cast, as you said. Mm -hmm. Not only the fact that they're great actors, but they had a chemistry on set that made them look like a tight-knit family. Yeah. You never doubt it. The three kids were hanging out so much that I had to break them up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and the older kids did the same thing. They were hanging out all the time. That's and um, Sienna, who played the, 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 the girlfriend, who was a magic to me, she came from my friend Jeff Goldberg, who's a big manager, he suggested her and when i saw her i was like oh my god she's gracie huh. and she hadn't done anything either she'd done a couple little things i love it love it well i mean this is this is the film right here uh we're talking about in case you're jumping in here the hill is the name of the movie you can go to the hill uh, and like i said it, it's it's a great cast a great story one that everybody will enjoy uh and even if, if you're not a sports person you know um it's a it's it's way more than a movie about baseball. In fact, that's sort of just the the background. I mean, it's an important part of it, but I mean, this is just one of those films that just kind of just hits all those great points, uh, and and based on the true story of of Rick Hill. Rick, um, I have a question for you uh, because I know this has been a long a long journey for you. How did it feel the first time you sat down? maybe even with an audience or maybe just recently like you were, I don't know if you were in Houston for the screening, but first time you sat down with an audience, saw the film when they saw it and got to see the audience's reaction to your story being told on film. What was that like for you? It's something that's never, ever happened before. Of course, um, probably the biggest, probably the biggest element of my entire life. And uh, kind of kind of brought back some baseball days because um, you know playing in front of large stadiums mm -hmm. and large crowds and things like that, and uh, getting chills, you know, and, and feeling very very powerful about uh, a ball game. I felt like I was back in. I feel like I was back in a a ball game again. 
And uh, it's a great feeling, especially the way he expressed uh, the, the note, everything of my father and my mother and my brother and sister and watching it there on screen is like, you can't even explain it because how do you touch it? It's, it's so far out there that it's just hard to believe. Uh, well, Ricky's being very humble, Randy. He cried his eyes out <laughs> did he? Good. I did. recently the whole time. And even up on stage when we had to talk, he couldn't, he didn't have a dry eye. He couldn't stop. And uh, the audience felt it. And they also were just embracing him. They stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Oh. And, and I think he just saw, he just threw out the first pitch at the Rangers game last night. Oh yeah. Um, and was on the field with the team and uh, they were all emotional over it. And uh, just the trailer. Wow. Wow. And then the Rangers got some good pitchers. So you're in good company this year. Finally. <laughs> um, but, but Jeff, for you, I know it's it's a whole different experience, you know. It's it's Rick's life almost on the screen, but it's your it's your baby in a sense from an artistic standpoint up on the screen. How did it hit you watching it? The same. Yeah. Pretty much um it's my life up on that screen too because <laughs> of all the time I put into it, um it's hard to describe how that feels. I was at that screening the same one that Ricky was emotional at and I wanted to get up and leave because I'd seen it so many times. Yeah. But the first five minutes at the audience's reaction, I couldn't leave. Yeah. And I, I told the lady, Jacqueline, that runs Lakewood Church's uh, screening and, and runs the church, who's the uh, uh, sister-in-law of Joel Olstein. I said, I have never experienced anything like this in my life. Mm -hmm. And I can't leave the theater. Those people are cheering over every home run he hits mm -hmm. and, and crying over every emotional thing he goes through mm -hmm. with him. And it was an out of body experience, Randy. I got it. That's why I said I can't wait <laughs> to have everyone see this movie. Um, and one of the things that she said that's really important I want to get out before we leave is to not sell the movie or be a salesperson or anything like that, but to be honest. These movies, she said, if you feel this about this movie and you're moved like you are, this movie needs to go out to everyone to inspire them today in a crazy world we live in. Yeah. And if you don't go buy tickets opening weekend, before opening weekend, now, you know, ahead of time, if you don't go buy tickets uh, on the night it opens and, and get group sales and get your people to go and fill that theater, every theater across America, the movie movies don't last. Right. They they get pulled. And and they she said, go out there. I'm supporting you to buy tickets. And I thought that was such a cool thing to say because instead of selling something to somebody and saying, if you love this movie and you're inspired by it, the only way you're going to see it for years is to go out and support it. Yeah, yeah. That's the hillmove.com, the hillmov.com is where they can get tickets now. And the Hill Move on Instagram, the Hill MOV on Instagram. Okay, yeah, good. And I don't know what the, the pre-sales ended up being like, but the film is, is, is open now. And that may not be in your area, but either way, right. you can go you can go onto the website uh, and – find out where you can see it if it's in your town go see it this weekend if you're watching this you know uh august 25th 26th around it's selling now. out in a lot of places now which is funny because yeah, i never bought tickets in advance for movies yeah. until recently when i saw that like sound of freedom sound was freedom. selling out yep i wanted to go see it before everybody else told me about it well and you're you're right i mean because we saw that with the sound of freedom by the way which uh people were buying tickets in advance and then seeing it in the theaters early and it kept it going it kept that's right. how you keep movies in theaters so more people see it is not go well i'll go see it in a couple of weeks may not right. be there in a couple of weeks but if you go see it now it'll be there for other people and other cities down the line so it really is i mean you know uh, jeff's not just trying to sell you on the action this is how the film industry works so if you're watching this you know today Right, you know, as, as this we're on the air with this, um, go, go get tickets for this weekend, at least during the week, perhaps next week. Even if you can give them away to somebody, say, "Hey, I got a couple of tickets, I can't go." Here you go. You're, I know you're going to love this film. That, that, that's how we get more of these uh, in in the pipeline. So it is important on that aspect. I have one last question for you, Rick. Uh, and and I mean, I know there's there's a lot, but if you could pick, what's that one? message that you hope people walk away from seeing your life story on the screen and take home with them? What, what message would that be? Well, uh, 
I've had that question several times. Um, you know, I've always, I've always wanted to uh, have two things working for me at one time. One was people knowing that I follow Christ mm -hmm. and, uh, and that, you know, miracles do come out of things uh, when you pray, because a lot of times people are wondering why their prayers doesn't get answered and then why some people's does. And, uh, and my, as far as mine is concerned, I hope that they carry this out, that if they're not, if they're not a believer, at least give it a, give it a shot, take a good look at what you're, what you're doing with your life today. And, um, I was, um, uh, the other night, the other night I, I just was sitting there and, and the Holy Spirit hit me and, and it told me Michael Jackson. And I thought, what in the world, Michael Jackson, what's, what's that all about? And then I realized it's the man in the mirror. Hmm. You gotta look at that man in the mirror and you gotta see what, uh, how about changing your ways Yeah. and then digging. And I'm hoping that the people that look at themselves and take this, take this with them when they walk out that door and, and realizing that they have a chance because, um, I think that, I think the time is close. I think you do too. I believe we all do. And so I hope they take it with them. Yeah. Yeah. Good, man. I appreciate both of you guys, your time, your, uh, man, your persistency and, and sticking with it, getting this film out there. Thank you both. Thank you, Randy. Thank I really you. appreciate it. I just hope that people, uh, get super inspired. And uh, my goal was at the last moment they walk out of that theater, they're, they're high. They're just high on the movie itself and they feel so great about their lives because that's what I've seen happen to people. I can't tell you that's what I made. I can only tell you that's what I see. I'm a, I'm a person that doesn't believe in talking. I believe in doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to show Ricky my, my vision of the movie before they'd hire me <laughs> instead of talking about it. So I made a movie that I made and what I'm seeing is in the audience the reaction is shocking. And I hope that everybody gets that same inspiration. Yeah. Well, you can do it now. You can do it this weekend. Go check out the Hill, the website, the Hill dot M O Hill M O V dot com. Uh, it looks just like this and go get your tickets. You will enjoy it. Take some friends with you, make an event of it. Uh, you won't regret it. You will be inspired. And as always, I appreciate you guys being here. Hit share and do it right now so we can get the word out as much as possible on this film. And if you haven't liked, follow it or subscribe. I always invite you to do that and come back. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. <laughs>